60 seconds of, and a couple of calls went against the Patriots in the last two and a half minutes of that ball game that really kind of made a difference. And un you hate to see things hinge on those type of calls, but it did. And uh, the Patriots couldn't recover from them. And you got to have give all the credit to UNC Pembroke. They did, and they played like the championship caliber team that they are. But the way the Patriots played has got a lot of the fans really excited because the amount of effort and the quality of play that they put out on the floor Wednesday night was fantastic. Absolutely, and, and with a very limited roster, let's not forget that the two games previous to UNCP on the road at North Greenville and at Converse, they had eight players for both of those games and ended up pulling last-second wins against both of those teams. UNCP was sort of the same way. They got a couple more players back, but like you said, in that last 30 seconds, and actually, for mainly the entirety of the game, Francis Marion was leading UNCP. So I think they really had UNCP against the ropes for most of that game. And, you know, thanks to Tyrell Kirk for the Braves. I mean, he really pulled through for them, and he scored about 10 points in the last 60 seconds. The, the, the real reason, and I could talk about officiating all night long, and I won't, but the real reason is if you look at the ta last 10 minutes of that ball game, the Patriots just could not clean up their own defensive glass. And they were out-rebounded by, I think, it was either 14 or 17 in the second half. And they had out-rebounded UNCP in the first half and then just got really blown off the boards in the second half. And that was probably the main reason that the Patriots uh, lost that lead and ended up losing the ball game. Something big what we saw in that game, talking to Coach Edwards after the game, we saw a lot of action from guard duo Tion Rollins yes. and Jose Benitez. Those two together, they are really special. And they're, you know, Jose is a freshman, Tion is a junior who came from Purdue. But I think if you can keep those two guys together for you know a little bit more time, I think a lot of special things will come for the Patriots. And that was really impressive. What Tion Rollins did in that ball game was really, really special. Uh, he just kept on. He, when the Patriots needed a big basket, he came down and, and gave it to them. And so it was really fun to watch him kind of develop in that, that one game. Now, you know he came from D1, so obviously he's got talent. Uh, but it was that's the first time he's really showed out like that uh, wearing a Patriots uniform. So it was really neat to see. Uh, you go back to some of the players we've lost. Uh, one of our senior leaders, Alex Cox, hasn't been on the floor the last couple of games. I think he was under protocols uh, or something at one point. So uh, I still, he's, I don't see him dressed out on the bench. So uh, we're going to be without his services again tonight. All right. Well, they're they're asking for us to appreciate these officials, and uh, we've got them stretching on our table right now. So, uh, thank you guys. We'll give them a little bit of applause, even though my president told me I wasn't supposed to uh, last Wednesday night. I, I will point on something real quick before we get into the starting lineups. Alex Cox actually might be playing tonight. A little bit of minutes, you know. He, like you said, the protocols. Uh, he hasn't had a lot of time spending with the team, so. We may see a little bit of him tonight, but I wouldn't expect him to get the full workload tonight coming back. Well, I think uh, if, if we get Tion and Jose playing the way they did on Wednesday night, I think uh, you miss that senior leadership, but I think we'll be okay if they can bring anything compared to what they did that night. So let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineups. The Erskine College Flying Fleet, they come into this game with a record of 2-16. and 16. Starting at forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Number four, Caleb Brooks. A 6'4, 185 junior guard from Charlotte, North Carolina. Jalen Priolu. And they just shut the lights out on me, so I've got to get my <laughs> lamp set up here. All right, there we go. Uh, also, a sophomore guard at six feet tall from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Number 12, RJ Bell. Coming in at a 6'4", 190 pound senior guard from Fort Mill, South Carolina, number 20, Amandi Brooks, and rounding out the starting five for the Flying Fleet, a 6'8", freshman forward from Boonville, North Carolina, number 35, Tavis Bridges. The head coach for the Flying Fleet is Lee Sarter, and his assistant coach is Robert McClure. 
That'll take us to our Patriots starting lineup. They come in with a record of 7-9. and nine. Starting at guard, 190-pound, 6'2", junior from Tallahassee, Florida, number one, Tion Rollins. Running the point tonight, 180-pound, 6'1", freshman guard from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, number four, Jose Benitez. A 6'2", 184-pound guard from Columbia, South Carolina. He's a junior, number 12, Matthew Lee. In the middle for the Patriots, a 6'8", 210-pound freshman from Sanford, Florida, number 15, Jonah Pierce. And rounding out the Patriots starting five, a 6'7", 215-pound freshman. Um, he's a forward from Sao Paulo, Brazil, number 34, Nick Silva. Head coach for the Patriots is head coach Gary Edwards. His assistant coaches are Jacob Zedner and Brandon Funk. The athletic trainer is Trevor Hess, and the manager is Dominic Orico. So those are our starting lineups for this afternoon. Starting about on time. The women's game was a pretty quick affair. Patriots are going to be wearing our home whites again. Blue numbers and letters, red piping, blue trim down the side. The fleet come in with their away blacks. They've got burgundy numbers and letters with gold piping. A little bit of white trim on those uniforms. In the middle for the Patriots, we're going to see Jonah Pierce and Tavis Bridges in the circle for the fleet. We're about ready to tip off, and here we go. Patriots control the tip. Benitez gets it into the paint, kicks it outside. Silva thought about a three. Rollins will take it off the front iron. No good. Pierce comes away with the offensive rebound. He goes in strong and picks up the blocking. They're going to call an offensive foul, or what did they call on that, Alex? I believe it was an offensive foul. They char I call a charge on Jonah Pierce. Uh, like, <laughs> as you can tell, it was a bit of a close call, but... Uh, it can go either way. It just seemed like there was too many arms and legs from both people flailing around to call that an offensive foul, but that's what we have, and Pierce picks up his first. Team's first. Turnover goes back to the Patriots. Benitez has it. He gets it down to the right block. Tavis, tight defense. Pierce comes away with the loose ball, though, and finally we have a call underneath at the baseline. I think this is going to be... A very difficult battle for the Patriots in terms of size because, they, you know, Jonah Pierce, he's a big forward. They got Nick Silva, who's 6'8", but uh, Erskins also has some size for themselves as well. A lot of athleticism on that fleet side of the ball. First foul was... We're going to see Amante Brooks. Amandi picks up his first personal foul, second team foul. Terrell Oglesby. Number 11, Terrell Oglesby checks in for the fleet. Pierce has it. Gets it over to Rollins. Rollins goes up strong, blocked by Bridges. But the Patriots come away with the loose ball. Five on the shot clock. Rollins has it. He drives in, puts the teardrop up, and with the shot clock dying, he scores the basket. This is going to be a real physical game. I can already tell in the first few minutes that Erskine is really going to be a, a pesty defensive team, and they're going to be very aggressive on offense. And the fleet come back. R.J. Bell rattles one home from the left elbow. I don't mind a physical ball game as long as they call it equally both ways and don't let them get out of hand. Inside, Benitez gets shut down by the trees. Lee comes in. He can't get it to go. With a little floater off the back iron. And the fleet has it once again. Bell. He backed off the defense and they left him alone. Had the wide open three but couldn't get it to go down. That's a dangerous play right there on defense from Silva. Benitez drove it right inside the top of the key and knocked one from straight away down. 4-2 our score now. 
back to what I was saying, that you, you, you can't leave a guard like R.J. Bell that open from three to start off here in the first three minutes of the match. Good backdoor cut going in the trees. And they're going to call a foul. Uh, number 21. Foul from the Patriot. I'm sorry. Number 12, number 12 Matthew, Matthew Lee. Silva did a good job of going straight up and defending that, but Lee came in and got a piece of him, so a couple of shots for Oglesby. It would have almost been smart if Lee would have just backed off because I think it would have been even harder for him to get over the arms of Nick Silva under that basket. I noticed the color of the basketball last time is quite orange in the men's game now. Is there any story behind that that you know of? Not that I know of, but, I mean, it, it looks fairly new. I, uh, the Patriots uh, have had a little bit of problems in the past with the ball having a little bit of air out of it, so maybe they got themselves a new game ball for today. Rollins resets. High screen by Pierce. And a little bit of over-aggressive defense, a good idea, Rollins... When they double teamed him, he had a split second chance to get it to Jonas for a wide open dunk, but just couldn't get over those two trees of Erskine. Erskine, what they're doing on defense early on is the Patriots will, will, will get their passes in, and as soon as that pass hits the next man, they're right up in their face. They're not letting them move. They don't. They want to make us uncomfortable, and, and I got to admit, that's a great strategy from Erskine coming into this game. Silva, wide open for three on the left side. Couldn't get it to go down. Silva had a tough game Wednesday night. Played a lot of minutes, just couldn't get things quite going. And we have an offensive foul that time on number five, Jalen Prielu. And Silva had a, a few game, a few game stretch where he was really scoring a lot of points. And I don't know if that's kind of what happened towards the UNCP game, that defenses were kind of zoning in more on him, but they might have to change that now with Rollins and Benitez really uh, doing a good job at the guard positions. And Cox is in the ball game for the Patriots. Sporting a new hairdo uh, as well. That's, that's why I didn't recognize him <laughs> uh, over on the other side. Rollins for three. He rattles it home. And Rollins knocks down his first tray of the day. A question for Coach Edwards I had against Pembroke after that game was, you really notice how Teon's coming out of his shell. He seems so relaxed when he takes those three-point shots now. And that's exactly what you need from a guard here on this team, is to be relaxed and to be confident when you put up shots. Absolutely. That's the difference between it looking like a garbage can and a thimble. <laughs> Absolutely. Johan Steve Yegba, number 30, checks in for the Patriots. And Benitez tries a three. Shotzi, he knocks it down too. So he gets a little encouragement from Rollins. So that's back-to-back -back trays for the Patriots. And they take a six-point lead. 11 on 11 over there. Ogilvy gives it up. Bell has it. He drives in. Knocked away by Benitez. Patriots have numbers. They get it into Rollins, and he finishes easily with the right hand. <laughs> this is a duo in the making. We haven't seen much of those two on the court this season, but in the last few games, they really have something going on. They really look like they complement each other well. They've got same speed. They seem to be on the same page, so it'll be exciting to watch them. Uh, this game and many others. All righty. So with 15.55 to go here in the first half of play, 12-4 is our score. Patriots up by eight. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Carolinas.
Patriots with an eight-point run to take this eight-point lead, 12 to four. Started off by back-to-back three-pointers from Benitez and Rollins, and then a couple of fast break points. It's, it's a really good thing for the Patriots to get you know started with such a lead because they've had trouble in the past with being down so much. Basket by number 12, R.J. Bell. Nice basket by R.J. Bell as he elevates from the right elbow, knocks it down. I always like watching guys shoot and make mid-range jumpers because everybody falls in love with that deep ball. Benitez, top of the key. Silva for three. Shotzi, he knocks one down. They didn't lose any fire coming out of that timeout. I tell you what, Hubert. That's, we haven't even done, uh, haven't even gone five minutes in this first half yet, and three different Patriots have knocked one down from distance. Thompson off back iron, no good. Alex comes away with the rebound, and Cox will trot it up the floor. Crossover, gets it up to Rollins between the circles. Loose man-to-man defense played right now by the fleet. Cox, he cocks for three. Can't get it to go down, and they're going to call Silva over the back, catching the arm. And that's something, as Silva progresses here at FMU, he does have to get better at with his fouls because he does tend to get in foul trouble early on and, and he you know he is an aggressive player but sometimes you just need to back off and you know don't get yourself in foul trouble don't hurt yourself too much early on right especially when they're fouls that are not necessarily good positional fouls right avoidable for sure silva kicks it back outside nba three round shot c and Rollins knocks down another three. Patriots poetry, up by 12. <laughs> poetry in motion, Hubert. It really is. It's, it's good to see how much chemistry that this, this starting five has together and, and what Gary Edwards can do as the season progresses. We have a travel on the interior. A pretty good little clear out there by Tyrell. He just slid the pivot foot before he could get the ball up on the glass. That last shot by Rollins was from D. Oh, yeah. Him and Silva. Silva also pretty much same range. So, uh, Patriots looking like the Golden State Warriors here early on. Right elbow. Silva has it. Hands it off to Benitez. Back to Silva. Silva gets a little bit of a head of steam. Fade away from the right elbow, and he knocks it down. He loves that shot. I, I think against UNCP, he might have taken that shot like four or five times. He hit a couple of them, uh, but he absolutely loves the fadeaway. Paying a little bit of tribute to Kobe Bryant. Nice elevation, but no joy for Thomas that time. And we're going to have a block called on number 12, R.J. Bell. I can see where they wanted a charge there and that it, you know, he did run into him very hard, but his feet were not set at all. It was most definitely a blocking foul on Erskine. They're still having a discussion over there about the call. Looks like Benitez will inbound the ball right in front of the head coach of the fleet who's still talking to the official over there. Jordan almost lost the ball, but gets it over to Rollins who backs up for three. Shotsy, he knocks another one down. He is on fire to start this game off. 13 points. In the first eight minutes, I mean, that, we might have to check the record books after that one. Well, from the Patriots, number 23. They're going to call Nigel Jordan. I'm not sure exactly what the call was. Number 12, R.J. Bell. Bell will go to the line. He'll shoot a pair. Knocks the first one down. Substitution for the Patriots, number five, Barrett St. Cyr. 
Harrod Sincere, number five, checks in for the Patriots. R.J. Bell hasn't taken many free throws. Only that's his fifth free throw this season, but he's made all of them. Well, and see, now he's six. That is funny you say that because earlier this Take week, uh, Michael Hawkins, the SID, and myself were looking at the roster, and he had no information about him, R.J. Bell. So we think that he came, as the program says, from, uh, I believe, Spartanburg Methodist College. He didn't have really anything online for us to put in the program. Gotcha. St. Cyr has it. He drives inside, kicks it back outside. Cox for three right side. In and out, no good. Alex Cox has had two good looks from over there and hasn't been able to knock him down. Deep three by the fleet. It rattles around, no good. Kept alive by Jordan. And Sincere comes away with it. Sincere drives in. And fancy one-handed finish. If you saw before that play happened, before Fareed headed to the basket, R.J. Bell again tried to uh, draw a charge on St. Cyr, but uh, unlucky. St. Cyr definitely saw it coming. And another steal that by St. Cyr. He gets it up to Benitez. Benitez gets it to Silva, who flushes it down. And that'll be a top play for Conference Carolinas right there. Very unselfish play by the Patriots on that fast break. There were two passes. Patriots unselfishly distributing the ball and a circus shot by Benitez as he reverses right-handed. Back-to-back top plays right there. The spin on that ball from Benitez was off the charts. How he got that in, I have no idea. Three-pointer by Bell, and he stops the bleeding for the fleet. But the Patriots are still up by 18 points here. I think you would have seen a timeout by now, but no timeout called for Erskine yet. St. Cyr gets it over to Cox. Silva. Jordan, right elbow. He turns, can't get it to go down. And quickly the other way, Thomas. Back out to Miller. Miller gets St. Cyr to ride his hip a little bit. I mean, that's a tough play for St. Cyr. It's not like you're going to let the guy just blow right by you. You know, you got to give a little bit of aggressiveness on that play, and I think that's a foul you can give up this early. So he'll give the foul up, and we'll be back in just a moment. Patriots up big early on in this ballgame. 10.40 to go in the first half. 29-11 is our score. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Small Phones Club is a fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Small Phones Club for their support. Thank you. 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 So the Patriots have started out on fire here from beyond the arc with Tion Rollins leading the way for the Patriots. Just for your information, the Patriots band are going to take the court on Monday at 4. It's a rescheduled ball game, so they're going to play Southern Wesleyan January 31st at 4 o'clock here in the Smith Center. The Fleet open, uh, inbound the ball from underneath their own basket. Brooks has it. He goes down the right side, elevates, gets the ball blocked, and looked like a travel, but the Patriots get the ball anyway. Oh, nice play by Nigel Jordan, really got all of that and wasn't really going to let, uh, excuse me, number four, Caleb Brooks, bully him in the paint. And that was a good job by Jordan on that play. Rollins thought about another three. St. Cyr goes up and that's a nice block that time. I believe that was Brooks, wasn't it? 
No, it was number 35, Bridges. Oh, nice move inside as he got Jonah going the wrong way. And Walter scores for the fleet. What the Patriots don't need to do is take their pedal off the metal. They need to keep it going, keep putting up points, and still be aggressive uh, from behind the arc. Jonah drove in and then tried to catch a backdoor cut to St. Cyr. Went off one of the shoes of a fleet player. Nigel Jordan gets the ball inside and finishes softly. Good inbounds play by the Patriots that time. Smart play by him because I thought he was going to try and catch a body there against uh, Bridges underneath. Prelu hands it off to Miller. We have a whistle and an offensive foul. Legal uh, screen, I believe, on Erskine there. Got a elbow to the lip, I think, Erskine, from Jordan. Travis Walters, offensive foul. It's going to be on uh, number 21, Travis Walters. His first personal foul. That's going to be the team six. So Benitez hits the deck and could not get it in. Coach Edwards is begging for a foul. Just trying to make his point known. Patriots still up by 18. Brooks for three. Front iron no good. And Rollins comes away with a rebound for the Patriots. We're going to have a foul 18 feet away from the basket as number 21 was grabbing onto Nigel Jordan. That's his second foul in the last minute and a half. It's also going to put Jordan on the line to shoot one and one. We'll see number 33, Connor Stark, check back in for the fleet. First free throws up, and he buries it. Looks good there for Nigel. Interestingly enough, only 7 of 18 from the charity stripe this year. He buries both of those. For Number 20, Silva Imanji checks back in as Nigel gets his two free throws and gets a breather. I think this first half has gone by so quickly. I mean, there, there's been a, a lot of fouls, but I think uh, when there hasn't been fouls, I think the play's been very quickly. A lot of these, you know, at least FMU so far has been hitting a lot of their shots. So uh, really quick first half, in my opinion. I agree. And the Patriots take their largest lead at 20 points. Rollins knocked the ball away. Prelu drives in, gets the ball off, and nice shot that time. That was some hard work rewarded by Prelu there. And a nice dish by Benitez and a flush by Pierce. You don't see many of those from this Patriots squad. Although they have some big guys down low, they don't get many chances to throw it down like that. And that's our second dunk of the game. And again, some hard work that time by R.J. Bell. He gets his own rebound and puts it back in. Benitez backs it up and throws an air ball out there. He wanted that one, but I'm not sure that was the right play. Hard work inside by Connor Stark. That was on the Patriots. That's going to be on Matthew Lee, his first personal foul, team six. That's also going to take us to another media timeout. So with 7.59 to go in the first half, the Fleet 17, Patriots 35. Big lead. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The world is changing, and Francis Marion University is leading the way as it prepares the young men and women for the future. We've added five new classroom buildings and 13 new academic programs in the past six years, and more are on the way. 
We're preparing to build a new environmental research center. We're expanding programs in engineering, business, education, healthcare, and the arts and sciences. And we're adding new fields when they're needed. When tomorrow comes, we'll be ready. Best of all, our students will too. Patriots having a very good half of basketball so far. Just over 12 minutes gone in the ball game. Connor Stark is going to go to the line. He'll shoot a pair. Connor's a 65% free throw shooter this season. Southpaw. Alex Cox is going to come back in, and Michael Lee will get a a little bit of a break over there. Stark has another opportunity. And he rattles it home. Some full court pressure, trapping pressure by the fleet. Skip pass all the way over, Silva. Rollins for three. No good. And the fleet push it the other way. We have a travel on Caleb Brooks, trying to make a quick move to the bait. Slip that pivot foot. I'm wondering where this seven footer for the Flying Fleet is on their roster, why they haven't uh, brought him into the game yet. I think that's the first seven footer I've seen in Conference Carolina's play this season. Augusta had a huge seven-footer in Peach Belt. But you're right, I haven't seen a seven-footer this season. Nice work that time by Jonah Pierce inside. He got good position, pulled it back down. We have a jump ball. And it will stay with Erskine. Prelu will inbound underneath his own basket on that baseline. Gets it in. Brooks works on Silva. Clears some space for himself a little bit. A tough shot. Patriots come away with a defensive rebound. Skip pass over to Cox, who gets it back to Rollins wide open straight away. Can't get it to go down. Prelu did a good job getting into the paint, just couldn't finish. Silva thought about it, takes it into 14 feet, puts up the jump shot, no good. Did a really good job of pump faking, getting the defender to miss, and then stepped in and couldn't knock down that mid-range. Prelu goes up with the left hand. Good move by him there. Uh, as I believe it was Tion Rollins going up for the block, but he made a little bit of a jab step and got his way around the defense. Benitez, Rollins wide open once again, left side. That one's, he didn't call the bank on that one, but I'll take it. Sometimes when it's going your way, it's just going your way, and that puts the Patriots back up by 19. I, I might have to start a new saying, when Tion Rollins gets the ball, it's tea time. Yeah, I like it. I like it. In and out, no good. Tough luck for R.J. Bell there. Benitez. They're going to call Benitez on the charge. They've been lobbying for that charge. I'm not sure that was the time to give it, though. I still don't think his feet were set on that play, but I think it was just too hard of a fall for them not to call it. So uh, I think that's what occurred there on that play. And they're selling the, uh, the falls really well as well. 
Well, Coach Edwards had some choice words over there for the opposite side official on that. I have a feeling it was something like just because you fall down doesn't mean. Alex Cox flew by. We're going to have a foul on Yegba. Position on the interior. He didn't have it. He picks up his first. And that's going to put Jalen on the line. He'll shoot one and one. I believe that was a... He knocks down the first one. 54% free throw shooter. Gets the fleet back to 18. Can go 17 here. Front iron, no good. Benitez gets it to Sincere. Silva goes up. Kicks it outside. Cox wide open for three, and he can't get another one to go down. I think a little rust on the shot. Hasn't been in a game in a while. Brooks gets it over to Bell. Bell takes it in. Can't get it to go down, and Yegba can't get the rebound. And just a bunch of hustle that time by the fleet. Rewards them. Benitez got himself caught in the corner, but quick pass out of it to Johan Steve. Benitez goes up strong. Gets the ball. Not, oh, brilliant play by the fleet. That was a very, very smart play by Jalen. Unfortunately, he, his foot was out of bounds when he went up to get that uh, rebound and put it down on Benitez. So it's going to stay possession. Patriots with 17 on the shot clock. I think that might have been the first time I've ever seen that sort of play because I've seen where people try to throw it off the, the leg or something like that, but never directly into the person's hands. Ollie Oop. The ball's on the deck. And Jordan goes up. And it goes off of Jordan's leg, so some helter-skelter. <laughs> some really good defense that time by the Patriots. As they went down, they thwarted an alley-oop, then they blocked another opportunity, got on the deck and pushed it the other way, and just could not quite get control of the situation. By the look of it, when Naja heading for the ball down court, I almost thought he was going to go for a windmill dunk with the way the ball was traveling with him, but unfortunate for him, that was really good defense on both sides. And Nigel got caught up in the air. Brooks leaned back into him, picked up the foul. That'll take us to another media timeout here. The Patriots still with a 16-point lead. Free throws for the fleet when we come back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Back here at the Smith Center, 
Alex, it's been a really interesting ball game. Patriots have been up by as much as 20. They're up by 16 now. The fleet can actually cut into that. It, as you said, it's been going by very fast. Uh, the Patriots seem to have control right now. That can change, but uh, it just, it's been an interesting ball game as far as just kind of it's going. You're right. You're absolutely you're absolutely right in terms of it's it's a quick game. It's going by fast. But I think something the Patriots have to focus on getting close to the end of this first half is don't let up because a lot of the times they will have the lead going into halftime, but they'll let it shrink and they'll let you know the opponent kind of bring it more towards their end. And that's something FMU can't do with the last three and a half minutes to go. We're also talking about Alex Cox has missed a couple of three-pointers that were open, uh, normally shots that he drains, and we figure he's going to keep on shooting, and those will start to fall for him. Cox has it now on the left wing. Silva backs it out. Ten on the shot clock. He picks up the dribble, has to get it to Pierce, back to Silva, and we're going to call a block that time. Interesting. I thought that one was the one that was the closest <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> that was the one. All the other ones, I, I would have said blocking, but I mean that one, that that one was sold well if it uh, if it wasn't a charge. But um, yeah, it certainly looked like a charge from our point of view. Silva will go to the line. He'll shoot one and one. The one thing, though, that the fleet has to be careful with is if they are going to keep trying to sell these, you know, hard falls, if they don't sell it too well, they could get a flop warning, and, and that could be dangerous for, you know, most likely R.J. Bell, who's been taking a lot of the charges and a lot of the falls so far. As well as when you're on the ground, now it becomes a five-on-four ball game right. for a split second, and that... Yep the way that the Patriots have been finishing today, the risk-reward starts to diminish. Front iron no good, but offensive rebound goes to Oglesby, who gets it into the lane. Asante Turner, who just checked into the last dead ball, number 13, is going to pick up the foul. That's going to be the 10th team foul on the Patriots, so it'll be double bonus for the flying fleet the rest of the way. Both teams are in the bonus. Patriots still a couple fouls away from being able to shoot two free throws themselves. He knocks down the first one. Ogilby, he's a 84% free throw shooter, so he's not one we want to put on the line regularly. Rollins now. Turner, deep on the right wing. Gets it to Silva. And Silva with a mental error. And that's going to get Yegba up, and Silva's going to come to the bench. Number 30, Johan Steve Yegba. Just a little bit of miscommunication there uh, between Turner and Silva, so that's tough. A couple of young players don't share the court a lot in those situations. Good defensive possession by the Patriots. And Stephen Thomas thought he had knocked it off of Pierce. The Erskine faithful don't care for that call, but <laughs> number four, Jose Benitez. Jose Benitez will check back in. Asante got a couple of minutes. I think with these last two and a half minutes, bringing in Tion and Jose together, I think that's exactly what they need to kind of extend their lead going into halftime. Jonah thought about a three. Benitez, 18 on the shot clock. Crosses over, gets down to the right block, stutter steps, goes all the way underneath the basket. Now there's under 10. High screen by Yegba. Cox. He gets it into a nice try, but good defense to keep 
Jonah Pierce away from getting that ball up on the rim. And now we'll have a block down underneath the basket. That'll be on Jose Benitez. We'll see a pair of free throws coming now from Jalen. Now, that was probably the correct call. But he was passing the ball to, out to the, the line for one of his own teammates to take the shot. I don't see how you send him to the line for that sort of foul. But I guess being in the double bonus and, uh, you know, Benitez tried to take the charge, that's, that's just the risk that you have to take there. If we're going to put someone on the line, this young man is a 54% free throw shooter, so he goes 0 for 2 on that trip. Benitez. Inside. Yegba goes up strong with the right hand and softly finishes. That's his bread and butter right there. That's his bread and butter. You get him the ball inside, he's going to hit you with all sorts of ball fakes, that pivot foot. He's dangerous inside. He just hasn't had the opportunities really this season to prove it. Nice drive and dish that time by Rollins. I'm sorry, Bell to Oglesby. Benitez stutters, gets it inside, and nice finger roll. Easy basket. I wasn't sure if he was going to rise up there or not because it looked like he got the vertical, but it, it, I was not sure. I thought Jose could throw it down, but... Uh, Maybe it was the more safer option with the finger roll. Who knows? <laughs> I like the two points. If you're not, however you get it, <laughs> exactly. Two points is fine. And I'm really curious. I didn't get a chance to see. Coach Edwards seemed like he was fired up, not in the positive way, but fired up in a "we need to talk about something" way after he called the timeout right after the Benitez uh, basket. A good thing he did call that timeout, though, because Benitez was basically on his back out of the play, and it would have been a five-on-four, and the fleet had already started to push the ball up the floor. Patriots up by 17. I think that's what their conversation was about, not fouling here. Don't send them to the line with this little time left. With the lead that we have on the board uh, as FMU, they have to be safe and cautious here in this last minute. But unfortunately, right there, they weren't that safe. And so Asante Turner is coming out of the ball game immediately after that. And we're going to see number 13. So Oglesby. This is the one we don't want at the line at 84%. And he buries that one. So Turner for the Patriots, comes 32. out, and we're going to see Jayden number 32, Jaden Ward check in. His the irony, though, with, with Asante coming into the game, Gary said one and one, no fouls. Very next possession, a foul on the play by Asante. So uh, I guess you could say he deservably needed to come out of that game. Well, I saw the shades of purple change in. Uh, coach's face, and when when those shades started to change, you knew something was going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Easy basket by Yegba there. Patriots. And a, no, no fouls, but they do knock down the three-pointer. Yegba gets it over. Five seconds between the shot clock and the game clock, and goodness gracious, the Patriots. Now for the Patriots, number 15, Jonah Pierce. Jonah Pierce, that was a big second foul for him. And Michael Lee could not quite get that one to go down right there point blank. And the line for Erskine, yeah, a tough four, play for him, but I mean, four. looking at this, you know, sending to the flying fleet to the free throw line again. I, I can't tell you how many times Coach Edwards has stressed in the last 30, 40 seconds. They are one and one. They are going to go to the line if you even touch them. So for me, the Patriots here have just, it's almost like they've completely ignored that, uh, that step in this process going into halftime. And Jonah Pierce was 75 feet away from the basket when he committed that foul. Yep. So 
It's got to be one of those things where the coaches <laughs> are just shaking their head. Cox has it, 15 on the game clock. Shot clock is off. Benitez, under 10 now. Sincere for three, off the iron, no good. Yeah, he kind of mishandled that pass there. It was a tough shot to get up, and he kind of rushed the, the process of getting the shot up there. Really tough shot for St. Cyr there uh, to end the half. Well, the Patriots had been up by 20 points and a little bit of uh, not paying attention to the situation of the game gave the fleet a lot of free points in the last 90 seconds of the of the first half which allowed them to crawl back into within 13 points still a good lead and a good half of basketball by the patriots just hate that little bit of um uh, non-awareness at the very end there absolutely and when you have an 18 point lead a 15 point lead whatever it may be and the the opposing team is in the bonus you don't go out there and commit these little touch fouls. You, you listen to Coach Edwards, who's been doing this for some time now, and you keep your hands straight up in the air because you, you sent Erskine there to the line maybe two or three times there in the last minute and a half, and you know they, they hit a couple of their free throws, brought them a little bit closer back into this game. And like I said earlier, they've had trouble doing that all season with a lead going into half. They let it shrink down, and that's exactly what they did again. But they still have a 13-point lead going into half. Time. So you, we can be a little overly critical sometimes, uh, yeah, but and, and, and but I have no problem with that. Especially, I just love the Asante Turner foul immediately after a timeout where yeah. coach had said don't foul, and immediately there was a foul. <laughs> I thought that was fantastic in a you know a, a very sardonic way. The Patriots did a great job in that half they shot 53 percent from the floor so a really good outing for them they held the fleet to only 33 percent uh shooting so they did the job defensively the biggest problem was is that the fleet erskine college had 18 free throw attempts in the first half and many of those i would ha hazard to say somewhere around anywhere from nine to ten they came in the last two or three minutes of the first half where the Patriots just could not keep themselves from fouling for some reason. And, and like you said, they've been sending Tyrell Oglesby to the line, who is their best free throw shooter. He's six for six on free throws. So if you're going to send somebody to the line, you know, don't send their best free throw shooter. I, you know, I mean, that that has to be quite an obvious, you know, perspective for the Patriots. But they did it anyway. So uh, here we are. Going back to uh, – Tion Rollins, though. Tion started the game out gangbusters, a little bit quieter toward the end of the second half, but the Patriots themselves were a little bit kind of quiet as a team later on in that second half. He's got 16 points, uh, four of seven from downtown, so he's, he's right where he left off on Wednesday night. Absolutely. I mean, let, let's also talk about, well, Tion has been doing a fantastic job like he has these past few games, but the guard duo that we talked about, adding Jose Benitez to that formula really helps them get things going, and they got uh, a lot of points early on in the first half. Jose Benitez is uh, two assists away from and one point away from his first ever career double-double as a Fismarian Patriot. And I don't think there's any way we can keep him from getting those two assists, that's for sure, because yeah. that young man has been putting dimes out there today. And they, But between the two of them, they've got over half of the Patriots' points just between uh, that duo out there in the backcourt. So really effective tandem. I don't really know... The vibe I got the last four or five minutes from the Patriots wasn't apathy or anything. I just don't I don't feel anything about what's going on. I don't feel the flow or anything. It was just so no. choppy, so many free throws. Uh, the Patriots still have that big lead, but I just I, they, I don't know if they went out uh, with momentum, without momentum, blah. I just kind of it was a weird ending to that first half. I think the right right word for it is chaotic, but in a bad way. Yeah. They 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 couldn't control the ball. There was a lot of uh, you know, diving for the balls on the floor. There was a lot of uh, rebounds that they couldn't quite, you know, grasp or passes that would kind of uh, not really controlled very well. So uh, if you're the Patriots and you're in that locker room right now, you just know that you kind of just have to uh, make everything a little bit more crisper and, and just be a little bit more better uh, possessing the ball. 
and just in general. I agree. So I like the position we're in. I wish it had been a little bit better. I wish we'd finished a little stronger just to end on kind of a high note instead of a I don't know note. And But we'll, we've got plenty of basketball left, and the Flying Fleet have played themselves back into this ball game down by only 13 starting our second half in just about 10 minutes or so. So we'll take a break now. Uh, Alex and I will step away. We'll be back in about eight minutes to set the table for second half action. Patriots up 48 to 35 at halftime. This is the Patriot Sports Network. Let me paint you a picture. All of the graduates, all of the faculty, all of the administration, all of the Board of Trustees is decked out in their regalia, their black robes, their hats, their gold tassels. It's just a most beautiful picture of a very formal kind of occasion. And here we march into the gymnasium and the music is playing and the gym is packed. And as we come in and as you look up, and all those people, you see families, huge families. You see not just mama and daddy and two brothers and a sister, but there's grandmama and granddaddy, there's the aunt and the uncle, they're the cousins, they're the next door neighbors. And you know why all those people are there? Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. And I can guarantee you that when you go to that graduation, you leave with a tear in your eye because it's so, so special. The desire and the love to take care of people is something that you kind of have innate. You kind of just have that thing. Um, but Francis Marion gave me the principles and they taught me the core values. They taught me leadership qualities and they've just been foundational and offered a family that I can keep going back to. So even though my personal biological family didn't go 
to a university um, and I didn't really get any experience, wisdom from them for that. I gained a family that could tell me all about college and even the afterlife of college by coming to Francis Marion. Um, and I'm not sure you would have that with you know, other universities. Throughout the nurse, the nurse practitioner program, you're already a nurse and you're a devoted nurse and you don't want to just quit. Um, and that's, that was another thing I specifically picked this program was because I was able to look at the curriculum and know that I could work. I even asked a couple of the professors, one being Dr. Hopla before I started the program, and even she told me, yes, you can still work while you do this. Um, and I did, I worked 40 hours a week, five days a week, um, sometimes it had to be six, six days a week um, to get my 40 hours in, and I still did the nurse practitioner program. Um, it wasn't easy, but nothing worth having is easy, so. which the benefit of having um, classmates and professors that were both working and studying is, you know, we would get worked up and worried about how would we ever do this? Um, and then they would say, well, you know, I can work these two 12-hour shifts on the weekends and then have the week to study. Or a professor may say, well, you can get creative with your hours here. So you can tell that they've done this, you know, that you can tell that they've gotten creative with their time as well. Um, and then all of a sudden it doesn't feel like such a daunting task because, again, you gain wisdom from their experience. Choosing a college isn't easy. There are lots of choices to make and so many variables to consider. How do you know when you've found just the right place? The right college will make you feel at home. And that begins with a sense of place. At Francis Marion University, we have a beautiful campus that's safe, well-maintained, and filled with smiling faces. It's the kind of place where you feel you belong where you wake up in the morning and know that the day ahead will be one you'll savor and enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean life at FMU is easy. There will be challenges. Hard work is expected. We take our academics seriously. You should too. Earning one of our degrees is a real achievement. But some toil, some time invested in a difficult task, that's okay. That's how you grow. How you become someone. FMU is a comprehensive public university and when it comes to academics our students have a wide range of choices. We offer more than 75 majors and courses of study. Our professional schools in healthcare, engineering, business, and education are all well known and respected across the state. At the same time the arts and the sciences remain the core of what we do. They are the perfect foundation for a successful career and a meaningful life. Programs are important and we'll continue to work to produce new curriculum that meets the needs of our changing world. But we also know that a great education is less about what is taught and more about who is doing the teaching. FMU's faculty is made up of distinguished scholars and renowned researchers. They're experts in their field and expert teachers too. They love the give and take of the classroom and revel in the progress their students make. In FMU's intimate academic environment where small classes are the norm, you'll get to know a lot of these dedicated men and women. Some you will remember forever. The academic work and its rewards are why you are here. But there will be a time and place for play too. We have more than 60 different student organizations and field teams in 14 NCAA sports. A robust schedule of extracurriculars is a big part of each semester. You'll find space here for rest and relaxation. You'll make new friends and build relationships that last a lifetime. And then, almost as quickly as it all began, it will be over. You will graduate and move on to a life and career full of promise. You'll Welcome leave memories behind. 
you'll leave FMU. But you'll be welcome back anytime. Home is like that, you know. Welcome home. Welcome to FMU. We are back here at the Smith Center, and I've got to put a little mea culpa out there. Maybe Tom Brady is not retiring. I know we had said that in the women's game, but ESPN had released that news, a flash headline. It turns out that Tom Brady has now gone on social media and said he has not had that conversation with his GM yet. So who knows? We'll see if Tom Brady comes back or not. Well, what we do know is the Fleet are going to have to come back if they want to win this ball game. Right now, the Patriots are up by 13. 48 to 40, 35 is our score. Patriots will inbound the ball in front of me. We've got Deion Rollins had a big first half, 16 points. He'll inbound it to Benitez. And we're underway. Benitez is working on Prelu. Silva gets trucked but gets back up. He's looking for some kind of foul on a moving pick. He's not going to get it, though. Silva now gets the high screen by Pierce. Skip pass over to Matthew Lee, who drives in, goes up with the right hand no good. Ball still tipped around. Lee has it and will have a touch on the baseline. No, they're going to call a foul on the floor. This one's going to be on number five, Jalen Prelu. Number five, Jalen Prelu. So Prelu picks up his second personal foul. Rollins steps out of bounds on the backside. And some of the fans didn't like the call. I was looking right at it. His foot was at least a half a foot out of bounds. Unfortunately, so the Patriots turn the ball over. The Fleet. Prelu goes inside, can't get it to go down, keeps it alive, though, and finally Benitez comes away with it and gets sandwiched by a pair of Fleet, and we'll see who they're going to call it on. It's going to be on number 12, R.J. Bell. And Bell picks up his second personal foul. That's the team's second here. Two early fouls on the Fleet. Silva works on Brooks, picks the high screen. Haven't been able to get that pick and roll. The Fleet have done a good job of jamming it up. Rollins does a step back from 17 feet, foot on the line, but a basket nonetheless. So Rollins picks up his 18th point. Bell crosses over, gets it to the elbow, keeps on moving. High floater off the rim. And Pierce comes away with a rebound for the Patriots. Rollins comes back the other way. Step back, left elbow. Knew it wasn't going to go. Followed his own shot. Gets it into Pierce. Pierce puts the ball on the floor. And nice defense by number 35, Davis Bridges. But it will remain Patriots ball. Rollins for three right side. Jotzi, he knocks that one down. So Rollins again feeling it. He's got his 21st point of the ball game to lead all scores. And the Patriots up by 18. Bell goes inside, knocked away, but still maintained possession. And a very good look that time by Jalen as he goes inside. And Bell is the beneficiary of that great drive and dish. Picks up the basket. Rollins, he back passes it to Silva and throws the ball away. Fifty-three thirty-seven is our score. Bell has it, walks it between the circles. Bridges goes inside. Jalen goes up strong with the left hand and finishes. Prelu 
with a nice, strong back down there. Benitez resets, 15 on the shot clock. He crosses over, goes inside, kicks it out. Pierce goes up strong. Silva, pump fake, had a good look at a three, and we're going to have a foul on the floor. It's going to be on number four, Caleb Brooks. Third team foul. Johan Steve Yegba checks in for Jonah Pierce. He gets the inbounds pass. Hands it off to Benitez. Rollins takes the three. It was dead on line, just a little strong. As he shot it right in front of me on the perfect angle. High screen. Benitez ducks underneath it. Jalen takes it from the free throw line. No good. Patriots storm back the other way. Twenty on the shot clock. Rollins has it. Ten on the shot clock. Silva gets fouled away from the basket by Caleb Brooks once again. They've been battling for the last couple of possessions. That's going to be his second personal foul, the fourth team foul. Benitez has hit the deck a couple of times today. He's got a big dark grease smear on the back of his jersey. Matthew Lee takes it up strong and gets it blocked away. Caleb Brooks, and then Matthew, I'm sorry, Benitez comes away and blocks Brooks. And a nice collected deuce by Amande Brooks right at the free throw line. A very nice block by Benitez on that time, though. Rollins for three straight away, back iron again. And then Silva. And that's going to be the Patriots' first team foul, the second on Silva. It'll take us to our first media timeout. So 15-24 to go in this ball game. Patriots up by 12. The Fleet have the ball when we come back. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Carolinas. The Patriots started out the second half, knocking down some shots, but Rollins has cooled off on the last two three-pointers he's attempted. They've been right on line, but just a tad too strong, and back iron both of them right back toward him. And the fleet have found themselves within 12 points now, and they've got possession, so it's possible for them to get inside double digits. I don't know if it will end up helping them or hurting them, but they already do have four team fouls, so just a couple away from putting the Patriots on the line. Francis Marion with only one team foul. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. This one's going to be on Silva again. As he was doing battle with Tavis Bridges. And that's going to get Nigel Jordan up. And Silva's going to come to the bench. I don't mind that foul that Nick just 
pulled right there at all. That was a very physical, aggressive, trying to get a rebound foul. And Benitez with the swipe. And he tried to go up for the slam. And Cox. And we'll have a blocking foul. Easy call on Tavis Bridges. So Cox is going to go to the line to shoot two. Benitez went up for the slam, and as he cuffed the ball, the defender got a really good beat on it and actually sent that ball back at him. He's got a, a little smile on his face. I'd be more comfortable if we had a 25-point lead and he was doing that, but I'm glad the young man is still loose. Number 11 checks in for the Flying Fleet. That's Terrell Oglesby, young man from Inman, South Carolina. And Alex Cox back on the line. He'll shoot the second one, and he knocks them both down. So Cox gets his first two points of the ball game. Oglesby works on Benitez. Patriots playing some tight man-to-man -man defense. A switch there. Skip it outside. Three-point opportunity. No good, but a long rebound goes to Brooks. And Brooks tried to force the issue, but one of the Patriots was there to stop him. And that was Alex Cox. They're going to call Matthew Lee, number 12. I thought it was number 11. So Matthew Lee picks up the personal foul. Team's third. Prelu loses the ball out of bounds, but he knocked it off of one of the Patriots players, but I guess the Patriot must have been standing on the sideline when he hit him, even though most of him was in the field of play. Fryer, no good, and we're going to have an undercut by Benitez. So this is the same thing that happened to the Patriots at the end of the UNC Pembroke game is they had a horrible time trying to take care of their own defensive glass and almost a highlight real play as Bell put it off one of the backs of the Patriots players, but finally... Ended up missing the layup. Benitez, deep on the left wing. 12 on the shot clock. Jordan has it. He's working on Tavis. Kick it outside. Three-point opportunity left side. Off the side iron. No good. Yegba has it. Cox does not get the three off. And so there's a shot clock violation there. Substitution for the Patriots, number one. So, Tion Rollins back in the ball game as Matthew Lee is going to get a break. We're also going to see Farid Sincere check in. So, St. Cyr comes in and Benitez will get a breather. Patriots up by 14 right now. Fleet have a chance to cut into that. Bell works on Cox. Nice backdoor cut. Ball was knocked out of bounds, but they're going to call a foul on the Patriots, number 23, Nigel Jordan. Nigel Jordan picks up his third personal foul. Oglesby knocks down another one. Again, not the one we want to put on the line. He's perfect on the day. And I just jinxed him, but the Patriots, once again, cannot get their defensive rebound and finally come away with it. And Yegba makes a good play, knocking it out of bounds off of Bridges. But again, a struggle for the Patriots to get defensive rebounds. Rollins. Brings the ball up the floor. He backs up, gets it over to St. Cyr, and the Patriots get across the timeline. 
13 minutes to go in the ball game. Cox has it, top of the key, St. Cyr. Tight man-to-man defense applied by this Flying Fleet team. Jordan from the left, at low. That's his shot. He couldn't get it to go down, though. Had a good look at it. Bell goes inside, kicks it out. In and out, no good, and the Patriots come away with it. Jordan gets it to Yegba. Rollins, top of the key for three. Can't get it to go down. Jordan tried to keep it alive. Couldn't do it. And the Patriots back on defense. And there's going to be an offensive foul. Easy call that time. It'll be on number 35, Tavis Bridges. Bridges. He was riding Jordan away from that play. We're going to see number 33, Connor Stark, check back in for Erskine. And Silva and Benitez back in for our Patriots. Benitez now running the point. Some trapping, full court pressure once again. Benitez gets it to Rollins, over to St. Cyr. St. Cyr drives inside, puts up a teardrop that doesn't even draw iron. And that has Coach Edwards over across the way, scratching his head. And nice drive inside by Jalen Prelu. Number five gets the basket. 11-point deficit. Rollins. Gets it inside, and he puts a teardrop off too strong and then loses the ball out of bounds, and the Patriots cannot buy a good possession here, and Coach Edwards gets off the deck. He's a little bit perturbed. He'll call a timeout. They're going to make that a media timeout. So the Fleet have the ball and can come within 10 on the next possession here. We'll be back in just a moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Here we are back at the Smith Center on this clear but cold afternoon in Florence, South Carolina. Erskine College has scrapped and clawed and stayed in this ball game. Patriots have had a 20-point lead. It's now down to 11. Three-point opportunity, and R.J. Bell. Gets the three, cuts it to eight, and then a turnover on the inbounds pass, and the Flying Fleet find themselves within six. Sincere for three. Shotzi! And Sincere with a huge answer for the Patriots, pushing that lead back up to nine. Bell goes baseline, kicks it back outside. Connor, he knocks down the 14-footer. Sincere has it. They were a little bit up the back of Silver there. But no call. And a 
Ball short that time by Prelu. And another poor pass over in that corner by the Patriots. And another wasted offensive opportunity. We've got 10.25 to go in this ball game. A frustrating stretch if you're a Patriots fan here. Last four minutes of this ball game. Sits here with the quick hands. And he goes up strong and finishes. Nice shield on Jalen. And he pushes the lead back to nine. Prealu works on Sincere. He crosses over, gets into the paint, goes up strong, and we're going to have a charge as Benitez set up wonderfully right there outside the circle. And Sincere filtered right into it. We're going to see number two, Jalen Miller, check in for the first time. And the Patriots with that nine-point lead, just under 10. Travis Walters back in for the ball game. They're getting some of Benitez's DNA off of the <laughs> deck there after he took the charge. Trapping defense by the fleet has been fairly effective. And another turnover. Patriots turn the ball back over, and Benitez goes up. And this time, instead of trying to slam it, he does a soft little floater and gets it to go down. I'm telling you, though, he can slam that ball down. If he, if he wants to, he can do it. And we saw right there the vertical on Benitez. I mean, it, he, he can definitely slam it down. I just think he chooses not to. I believe that was the correct call at this juncture in the game when I've been watching the Patriots have trouble came cleaning up the defensive glass just like they had against UNC mm -hmm. Pembroke and watching that uh, lead slip into single digits and all the way down to six points, uh, the Patriots having some questionable offensive possessions, I think that was a good – we need to get those points back rolling. Right, and I think their uh, full-court defense from – the flying fleet kind of caught him off guard a little bit. I mean, not that you shouldn't be ready for that, but it really surprised them, I think. And we saw a multitude of turnovers off the inbound passes, trying to get the ball down court. So for me, the Patriots, you can't really relax against a defense like this. So you have to be on point. Everybody has to be on the same page, and you can't commit turnovers right here at this time in the second half. It's really interesting. We have dictated the the pace of play and how the how it's been going, except for the last five minutes. The last five minutes, the fleet have basically said we're going to go up tempo, and it's gotten us completely out. We're making um, mental errors because of the frenetic pace of what's going on. Absolutely, and I don't see the flying fleet slowing down anytime soon. So expect for the rest of this these nine minutes left here. Uh, Erskine's going to go 1,000% at the Patriots. And I think we need to say, if that's the pace you want to play at, fine. We're not going to do it. Right. And I, I, we need to get the ball up the floor, set up our offense, take exactly. some time off the clock, and do what we were doing all half. Right. Get it inside, kick yep. it outside, and let Rollins and other people take those open shots. The Fleet kick it outside. Bell for three. No good. And Cox was up there for the rebound, but it was knocked away by, I believe, Connor. One of the Fleet got their hand on it, and it will be Patriots ball. And I think right now as well for the Patriots, don't force any threes, you know. They're giving you a lot of these open passes. And Rollins who hit one early in the half has just not been able to get. He's been right there. They've been right on line. That's another one that was just a little bit too strong. And another turnover. Quick hands. Good defense by Rollins. Sincere. Gets it to the elbow. High shot. And 
We're going to have a foul. Uh, oh. Number 21. Exactly what the Patriots should do. Like we said, don't force threes, you know, don't commit turnovers. Drive to the basket, let them foul you and send you to the free throw line. That's exactly what they did right there, and we'll see if Fareed can knock down these two free throws. Fareed's been very active here in the second half, and he knocks down the first one. Second free throws up and good. I think as the Patriots get closer to the end of this regular season and even going into next season, I think that they have to know that in situations like this, even when you have a 13-point lead, you're never safe because teams in Conference Carolinas have shown that they can come back from all sorts of crazy leads. And that should be a jump ball, and it is. That should stay with the fleet, though. You're right. This, we're still getting used to these teams in Conference Carolina, and all of them seem to have a knack, especially when we're playing with them, that they, they can be down big and make a big charge back. Absolutely. Kick outside, three-point. And a knockdown three-pointer by Jalen Miller. And so the Patriots lead cut to 10. Alex Cox. Gets the ball stripped away by Miller. It stays with the Patriots. And they're going to inbound it right in front of my compatriot Alex here. Matthew Lee will get those duties. He gets it to Silva. 22 on the shot clock. Patriots set up. Rollins just out of the logo. Tight man-to-man -man defense being applied by the fleet for the last three or four minutes. And another ball knocked out of bounds. 12 on the shot clock. In terms of holding this lead with the little time that they have, use as much of that shot clock as you can. You know, you might not get the best shot that you want at the end of the clock, but that's a positive because you're getting all that time off the clock and it gives them less of a chance to bring it back. Absolutely. 64-54, 10-point lead for the Patriots. Another media timeout. We'll be back in just one moment. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Swampons Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department, and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Swamp Fox Club for their support. Thank you. 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 Here we are back at the Smith Center. Patriots with a 10-point lead, but it seems like they've been clinging to that 10-point lead. It doesn't feel like a comfortable 10 points at all. Silva drives into the paint, kicks it outside. Cox for three, left side, no good. And Pierce couldn't come away with the rebound. And that shot still not falling for Alex Cox today. Yeah, he's had a really tough time coming back into this contest. Just really getting comfortable with the play style. He's been out for a little bit, so still got a little bit of rust to shake off. His only two points of the ball game came from some free throws. And Connor, a little bad luck, got one rolling around. Cox gets it to Lee, and the Patriots get it across the timeline. Pierce, top of the key, down low. Lee goes up strong. I'm not sure how that was in some kind of travel. Maybe it was tipped by one of the fleet. And Silva gets it up on the glass, no good, as the shot clock was expiring. Like we said, yeah, I mean, you're not going to get the shot you want, but at least you take a little bit of the time off the clock. Three, 
Bell. And then a couple of fleet fight for the rebound and knock the ball out of bounds. I believe Connor there was looking for the putback and uh, got stuffed by his own teammate there. That's unfortunate for the flying fleet. Benitez back in. Rollins. Rollins. If Silva can knock it down, uh, and it gets caught up in the rafters. So the Patriots, it's really difficult for them to buy a basket. That was early in the shot clock. It was a wide open one, but you, just as you said, we don't need to settle for threes. Jalen Prelu back in for the Flying Fleet. He's got nine points on the evening, but he's done a great job defensively and causing havoc for the Patriots. Miller works on Cox. They're going to call that. Alex Cox. And that's an and one situation. I thought he took a, a step too many on that play, but don't think it was caught by the officials, so he'll head to the line for two. And he gets three the old-fashioned way. And that's exactly the player they don't need to foul. <laughs> Tyrell Oglesby, who I believe is still at 100% free throw percentage right now. Well, so he was 84% when he started, and he's probably gone up from that point. He's sitting at 87.5% at the free throw line, which is still really good for as many times as he shot it. Silva goes up, and a good strong finish that time as the support defender flashed by. Silva pulled up and scored easily. Bell goes inside, and a high shot off the glass. Bell with 21 points, matches Rollins. Rollins for three, top of the key, back iron that one. Cox goes up high with it and finishes. So second chance points that time. And Coach Edwards is going to call a 30-second timeout. I think Alex Cox finally said, you know what, I'm probably not going to hit a three today. Let me see if I can help out on the other end, rebounding, you know, second chance points. Great job from Cox down low there. I believe uh, Rollins has not made but one three-pointer in this second half, and he's taken, I know, five of them. And so these at least last four, it's been so close. That was actually, uh, he still got it up on the rim, but the three before that were basically halfway down, just couldn't get him to go down, and he's having a struggle right now, and it's someone we relied on for most of the game to come back and hit big shots. Well, one thing that I'm noticing him doing is early in the first half, he was kind of letting the plays come to him. He wasn't really dribbling down the court immediately pulling up. He was letting the offense flow, pass it around a little bit, you know, three pass minimum. Now he's kind of been dribbling up the court and pulling up immediately, which as you just said, he hasn't really made that many in the second half. So maybe kind of sit back a little bit. You know, you're still the prime scorer for these Patriots, but just kind of let the offense milk some of that clock off. Don't come down straight off the inbounds and pull up for three. He was four of seven in the first half, and he's now five of, I believe, 15 or six, eight? 13. Five of 13. Yep. So only one make out of six tries in the second half. Bell, who's been on fire for the fleet. Step back three, no good. And Silva couldn't corral the defensive rebound between his legs. Rollins almost stole it. And we're going to have a shot clock violation. So the head coach for the Flying Fleet, Lee Sarter, thought that Silva actually got possession, and so it should have been a reset of the shot clock, but the officials don't think so, and so shot clock violation. Patriots have the ball with a nine-point lead. 
it's a decent argument, but I have to side with the officials on it. He, he didn't have possession of it. It was rolling in between his legs, so uh, good call there from our officials. Silva drives in. He's going to go to the line to shoot one and one. Number four, Caleb Brooks. Brooks is going to pick up his third personal foul. Miller back in for the fleet. Number 34, Nick Silva. And, and as we've, you know, kept talking about it, you know, milking the shot clock and, you know, being comfortable, a little bit more relaxed here and don't force anything. Uh, Silva's been doing exactly that. You know, he's been going towards the basket. But for me, I think if you're the Patriots here, Playing simple is okay. You don't have to play crazy. You don't have to, you know, perform all these acrobatic plays. Play a little bit of simple basketball with these last four and a half minutes left. Two big free throws by Silva there. Absolutely. Put the lead back to double digits, 11 points for the Patriots. Bell with another left-handed teardrop, and we're going to have a charge on the inside. Good situation as Silva makes another good play here. Solid, fundamental play. And I think that has a one word definition to that, and that would be oh. karma. Yes. <laughs> With all the charging and blocking fouls we've seen in the first half, uh, I think it's about time uh, the Patriots had a charge go their way for once. They're going to have to get it in. I noticed Bell had set up on the free throw line like he was going to shoot some free throws, and it actually <laughs> had me freaked out a little bit. Benitez, calm hands have the ball now. Seven on the shot clock. Rollins for three, and he gets it to roll around. No good. Yegba goes up strong, and they're going to call a charge that way. I guess we can't call it karma then <laughs> if it happens on the next possession. Too. <laughs> Patriots had a couple of good looks there. They did use a lot of the shot clock. Rollins just cannot buy a basket right now. Timeout on the floor. Media timeout. I understand when you get the, a long offensive rebound out there to the block, and your tendency is to want to go back up with it. Right. It would have been a perfect opportunity for him with a reset shot clock to take it back outside and reset the offense and let the Patriots burn some more clock. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with that statement, but, you know, sometimes it kind of just takes the, the more older players to kind of realize that that's going on, like if that was an Alex Cox or if that was a Nyjah Jordan. I think it may have gone differently, but when you have a lot of young players on this team, they might uh, all the time realize that they have oh the shot clock reset maybe let's regroup and bring it back outside right that the uh, point absolutely well taken and they'll grow into those because those are just <laughs> basketball iq plays yep. that that actually are plays that need to be made mm -hmm. but it's understandable sometimes right. whether or not well the patriots are really in uh, a little bit of a barn burner here against this erskine's team only 11 points up, and Erskine will have the ball when we come out of this break. It's uh, It's been a lot of hard work for the Patriots all season long, but it seems like this game, we've had opportunities to really uh, put them out, and you've got to give it to the fleet. They just keep on holding on and holding yep. on and holding on. And not that this game is more important than any other game this season, but if they were to win this game, the Patriots, this would be the first Conference Carolina's home win in the history of this program. And that's big. All those little things uh, are big. It means a lot probably to a lot of the players, the coaches. So uh, that would be wonderful to see here in Florence, South Carolina. All right, Bell mans up against Benitez. They go inside. And they move it around. Some good ball movement. They just don't get the shot they're looking for. Finally, Bell puts it up there. I believe it might have been tipped. And uh, was that Benitez or Rollins who threw that outlet pass out there to Matthew Lee? I believe that was Benitez. Almost stolen away. And a little too... Random and the fleet throw the ball out of bounds. So that was a big outlet pass. And Matthew Lee finishes easily at the rim. At the moment, the assist hasn't gone to Benitez yet, but 
They're going to call a five-second count on Yegba. And that must have been some really good defense from Jalen Miller because I thought he had his hands all over him, but he was just defending Benitez incredibly well from the inbound pass. And so the turnover gets the ball back into the fleet's hand. Wide open three on the left side and buried. Jalen Miller has come in and hit a couple of three-pointers. The Patriots need to figure out how to get the ball inbounds. They've been begging for that five-second call the last couple of possessions, and they finally do. Patriots up by 10. Three minutes now to go in this ball game. Silva works inside, turns around, goes up strong, too strong. And we're going to have a whistle and a jump ball. I thought Silva had gotten himself in a perfect position to score Absolutely, that basket, yeah. and I don't know how it went off the backboard. I thought he was fouled from the position I was looking at, but they didn't call anything down here, so must not have been that physical of a foul for them to call it. I thought it was a nice move. He spun away from the defense mm -hmm. and got inside the defender that was right on him. So they're going to... Give us a couple of extra seconds on the shot clock. 20. Yeah, Benitez. Man. Like we were saying, I think it's important now, really, that they milk this clock. And that, as we say that, they turn the ball over on the inbounds pass again. And that was actually just a lucky how do you do. Bell was defending, and he happened to put his arm up, wasn't even looking at the ball, and the ball hit him in the back shoulder, yep. and he came away with it. And so he knocks down the first three slow, and guess what? That lead is down to nine. If you're the Patriots here, you, you have to recognize, you know, 249, they're, they're shrinking our lead. We're in the double bonus. Go to the basket and draw a foul. Go to the free throw line, but that's... They're having a tough time when you have full court defense all around you. And they are like a buzzing swarm of bees out there. Rollins settles it a little bit. He gets the high screen from Yegba, dribbles in through it, goes up with the shot and knocks it down. That was a smooth play from Tion Rollins. Really faked out the defense and got an open lane straight to the basket. Miller. Loses the ball. Benitez and Yegba heads up, gets it, and over to Matthew Lee for another easy basket. And we're going to have a quick timeout here by one of the officials after the score. That was a high IQ play from Yegba on that because... Benitez was screaming. He's saying, I can't touch the ball. I can't touch the ball. And, and I don't think many of his teammates heard him. And, and Yegba came racing over and finally picked it up. Bell. Benitez giving him the baseline. He pump fakes in and out. No good by Bell. And Silva comes away with a strong rebound for the Patriots. And the ball knocked out of bounds by... Miller. And, and I will say this in Nick Silva's defense because he's had a lot of fouls called on him tonight. He gets fouled so many times when he has the ball down low. He takes so many shots and they are never called. So uh, I just wanted to shout out Nick Silva a little bit because he, he really doesn't get a lot of calls that go his way because he is a very physical player and he's always inside the paint a lot. Uh, I have been watching him now for the last four or five ball games here, and I agree with you 100%. I, I've never seen anything like it. He's not. It's one thing if somebody like Shaquille O'Neal doesn't get a lot of calls inside because he's just the biggest, most dominating person in there, and they just feel like uh, he's a big enough, he can take care of himself. Mm -hmm. But Silva is a big guy, but he's not the biggest guy, right. and he gets pounded a lot yep. uh, inside with very, very... Uh, He's a strong kid, yep. you know, it, yep. but uh, it really, he doesn't, maybe as he stays in the program and he gets a little bit more respect in the league, they'll start giving him right. some, some of the calls, but he's really 
been uh, he's been getting beat up by officials uh, this year. Right, and I think that's just it's like the being the rookie yep. in a professional league. You know, you, you got to earn the right to get those calls. Fifteen on the shot clock. Benitez has the ball. Oglesby works on him. Jonah thought about a three and then gets it back to Rollins. Three on the way. Buried it. Shotsy. And there it is. That's what we were looking for. And he gets his second three-pointer of the second half and takes his total to 26 points. Oglesby for three. No good. Rollins has it. He gets it up to Jonas. And Pierce. He missed the flush, but the Patriots, and he gets that one. <laughs> a little bit of redemption there for Jonah Pierce. He knew it. As soon as that ball ringed out of the rim, he said, I got to get that back. Come on. And so Pierce back ironed the first attempt and then got the refeed from Cox, which is, I'm happy for that young man. But that also, it takes the lead up to 19, which is really a fascinating score because if you'd told me 19 points 45 minutes ago, I'd have said sure. If you'd right. told me 19 points five minutes ago, I'd say I'm not sure we're winning. Absolutely. It's crazy just how sometimes you look at the score and you say, oh, wow, these guys are in trouble. You blink, next thing you know, they have grown this lead out. It, it, it is actually incredible to watch and see it unfold. And I like the fact that the Patriots did not fold and right. they didn't tighten up and they may have done things that I think are crazy, yeah. but they, it, a lot of them worked for them. They pushed the ball up and got easy baskets. Uh, Matthew Lee with two easy buckets, four points uh, on fast break opportunities, running the floor. So uh, I'm really proud of the young men for not Sometimes with that big lead, if you see it shrink to a certain number, everything tightens up and yeah. it gets even harder. They've had that problem, like we've said, with UNCP, with a lot of games. Those two road games where they only had eight people, they were behind a lot of those games. Uh, and they, they knew that things were getting tight, but they didn't crack under pressure. So good for the Patriots here in these last few minutes. So we've got 52 seconds to go here. Patriots with a 19-point lead. Bell goes up strong, in and out no good, and they're going to call another charge on Bell. And I think that Silva has picked up his at least second charge and possibly his third of the day. Bell's had quite a ball game, 22 points on his own. Lee has it. Dangerous pass. And Silva loses the ball. Miller gets it to Oglesby. Back to Miller for three. And he buries it. Cox Gets it across the timeline, and we're going to have a foul. It'll be on Caleb Brooks, his fourth personal foul. And Alex will go to the line. He's got four points. He's got a second chance bucket and a couple of free throws this evening on his first night back. It's almost like, uh, it, it almost feels like a debut for him just because it, it, it feels like it's been so long without him on the court. So, uh, like we said earlier, you know, shaking off a little bit of that rust. But uh, I think as these next games come about, he'll get a little bit more comfortable with his play. I really liked a lot of the different sets that uh, Coach Edwards has put in, a lot of the lineups. And the emergence of Rollins and Benitez as that tandem in the backcourt is really, and Cox is just going to add another good shooting guard and leadership to that group. And Jonah with the rebound. And this game is over. And the Patriots get their first home victory in Conference Carolina 
it's going to send them to eight and nine. And Erskine is going to fall to two and 17. So a big win for the Patriots program today. It really was, and I think we can't highlight enough over these past four games, starting with the eight-man lineup going into the road trip, then against UNCP, now tonight against Erskine, it's tea time. I think it's officially tea time, and yes, we're trademarking that right here. Tion Rollins has been absolutely incredible. Against Pembroke, he had almost 30 points. Today, he crosses 20 again. And on the road against those two teams, Converse and North Greenville, pretty sure he had game-winning buckets against both of those teams. So he's really been uh, up and coming and coming out of his shell for the Patriots. And that's absolutely critical for any winning squad is to be able to say, hey, I want to put the ball in somebody's hands when we need a bucket and we finally, it seems like we've got that person emerging. They uh, do. A consistent score coming in. Silva can score. Benitez can score. Uh, Yo, uh, Jonah Pierce can score. We've got some people that can score, but the, the one that has emerged over the last four ball games that can score consistently, you know you're going to get the production out of, has been, like you say, it's tea time. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we might have to check this later, but I believe Tion got his first double-double of his career here at the Patriots tonight. He ended up getting 10 rebounds with the 26 points. So, I mean, th there's really not much more we can say about him besides the fact that he has really become to emerge on this stage. He's really taking in the role of being that number one scoring option while all those guys were out for a period of time. So, And I think that's why we saw Gary use that same starting five from the eight-man road trip is because – why break up this chemistry when you're doing so well with this team? Uh, I want to see more of that, and we'll get a chance to see more of that tandem at 4 o'clock on Monday, an interesting time, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's a makeup game from, a, I think, a COVID-related yep. cancellation from a week or so ago. So the men's team, only the men's team, is going to play on Monday at 4 o'clock right here in the Smith Center up against Southern Wesleyan. We lost big to Southern Wesleyan a few weeks ago back in December. That was our last game before the major break. I think it's a whole different team um, uh, that we're putting on the floor since that time. So I'll be really curious to see how we perform, especially yeah. at an interesting 4 o'clock day game. Uh, but I want to see that starting lineup as well and see if it is still going to be Benitez and Rollins starting. I, I have a feeling there's yeah. no way you can't have there's uh, no way you, can. you can't have that going on. But the other three will be interesting. Uh, a, a good shout out to Erskine College. They fought the entire game. There was no give up on those guys. R.J. Bell had a great game, 22 points, uh, 14 points for Oglesby. A lot of those coming from the line. We put them there a great deal in the first half. Uh, our Patriots, Benitez had 11 points. He was one assist away from a double-double. Uh, you talked about T. Rollins did have a double-double points and rebounds. 13 points for Nick Silva, who battled all game long. He Wasn't did. the prettiest 13, but yep. he does a lot of things that are dirty. And I don't mean dirty as in dirty player, as in getting down in the mud yeah. and having to scratch and claw for everything that he's getting. Patriots, big win for them. First one at home in Conference Carolina. And we'll be back on the floor at 4 o'clock. Any final thoughts there, Alex? Final thoughts would be you, you highlighted Southern Wesley on Monday. Following that, though, they got to go on the road to Lees McRae and King University, who are two teams they played here at the Smith Center, and they had a little bit of trouble with them. Good shooting teams, Lees McRae and King University. So we'll see how we can do on that road trip right after we get rid of that Monday game, and hopefully we can fare better against Southern Wesleyan than we did the first time we saw them. So for Alex Wobie and Hubert Setzler and the rest of our crew back here and you two behind the camera, <laughs> uh, this is the Patriot Sports Network. Good night.